This is Business Foresight, the hashtag BizForesight. Meet Sharon Jaroge, a 21-year-old entrepreneur whose concept of business will leave you breathless, almost literally. A graduate of International Relations and Economics from the University of Birmingham, United Kingdom, Sharon explains her entrepreneurial concept presented in this book. She calls it the Discoucher. The business is called Discoucher. It's essentially a book, which you can see. Um, you purchase this book for 2,000 shillings, and within this book, there are discounts to multiple different services, to restaurants, to hotels, to salons and spas. So each service gets a page with two vouchers and a business card. So each voucher gives individual access to um, a f something for free. For instance, if you go to Dari, their offer is get one dessert and soft drink free when you buy a main menu meal. Or if you go to Four Cafe Restaurant, uh, for Cafe Bistro, um, you buy a main course, you get a main course for free. So each service has something it's giving you for free with the voucher on the, upon the purchase of a certain item. So essentially it's a buy one get one free kind of concept or rather that's our long term focus because um, at the moment the offers do vary but our long term goal is to have every voucher in the book to be buy one get one free. She creates a mental picture of a time when a single book will be the gateway for locals and tourists to sample the best that Kenya has to offer in terms of hotels, spas, restaurants and much more. This book, The Disc Culture, is her first edition released in March of this year. It is an yearly publication of the compilation of products on offer. So this book is currently 63 pages. Um, we have 20 different services. Um, the main idea behind focusing on restaurants, hotels and salons is uh, as an individual who didn't grow up or live in Kenya, whenever I used to come back every summer, I struggled to know where do I go and eat, you know? I've, where do I go eat? Where do I go do my hair? Where where's a good place to stay when I'm here for a short period of time. So that helped narrow down the, the focus on restaurants, hotels, and salons. But also the whole concept is, is open. It's for services in general. Our focus is service providers, um, promoting service providers and creating awareness to the different services that are out there in the market. Some special offers on purchase of the book referred to as the Discoucher include a free ticket to a Phoenix theater play. The value of the voucher is not less than 40,000 shillings. The annual publication has a dedicated website she personally runs. She hopes it will grow to become the one-stop solution for all who wish to travel and relax in Kenya. The idea behind the services we chose it we chose to pursue, or I chose to pursue for this book, was upmarket services, um, places where you don't, wouldn't generally think to go because you assume they're too expensive or I can't afford that. But in reality, there are great places out there in the market which are affordable, but individuals don't know that. They have this facade or this instant assumption that it's an expensive establishment. So this entices people to try those places without being put off and gives them an incentive to go. The Discoucher allows you to get discounts to Carnival, Dari, Eka Hotel, Four Cafe Bistro, Rendezvous, Le Palanque, The King Post, La Maison Royale and many more establishments. She makes money from the sale of books as well as from the establishments that pay to get advertised on the platform. She is humbled they took a chance on her in her premier publication. Essentially it's like a billboard, the way a billboard advert works. I provide the space they pay to be on the space knowing that they are guaranteed the reach. So the way it benefits the services is that you entice new customers. For instance, someone may buy this book because they know they can get a voucher at a carnivore. So they've used their carnivore voucher and they think, you know what, I want to go out for dinner. Do I save some money or do I go pay full price at a place that I know? 
So you're more likely to choose for a way to save some cash. So you look at other different services. So perhaps you've never heard of Four Cafe, but because it's here and because they're offering you a free main course, when you buy a main course, you know you can go, for instance, with your family or with your friends. And let's say you go as a group of four, you'll know you'll get two meals for free. So you're definitely more likely to go to a new establishment for that reason. She believes the this culture allows you to get to know about establishments you may never have heard about and gives you details of the place and brief description of services on offer. Zawadim Dibo for The Entrepreneur. Well, thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Business Foresight. This is the segment where we talk about the experts, and this is the expert corner. However, today we begin with a testimonial of a lady. Her name, Wairimo Karaoke, talking to us about leadership and entrepreneurship. What has she learned over time, and what is her aspiration? That will form the basis of our discussion right after. Hi, my name is Wairimo Karaoke. I'm a law student from Catholic University, intending to graduate at the end of the year. And for me, for the longest time, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I've always wanted to own my own company and to just trade in business and be successful at it. For, I've always educated myself, whether it's through YouTube or reading the Business Daily or just anywhere that I, that I could find business information, I've always gone to eat and look for such information. So the beginning of this year, I attended a seminar where I was able to learn what it takes to start your own business and see people who are young and have been successful at it. And I was lucky enough to get into a program for the last three months where I have been able to grow as an entrepreneur. I've gotten knowledge on how I can start my company and how I can realize success without actually going through so many shortcomings. I've acquired skills in planning, skills in sourcing for investments, and getting people to partner with me for my project and my business. I've also been able to learn that entrepreneurship goes much more than just selling goods and services. Entrepreneurship means believing in yourself, believing in a dream, and getting other people to believe in that dream and move them with you. I've also learned that entrepreneurship is self-actualization, like living your dream, finding your purpose, and being passionate about it, and then the money comes with following this path. So I have been very lucky in this respect, and this is something that I would want young people to realize and to be able to get to identify when they're still young and grow with it. Well, thank you very much, uh, Wairemo. That was Wairemo speaking to us about uh, what, in her opinion, entrepreneurship is and what she's been able to learn, the desire and the urge to have herself or to equip herself with knowledge that will prosper the business she has in mind. Now, they say that you do not need money to begin a business. All you need is an idea, and that idea is going to be the platform upon which the money or the capital shall be generated. Today our special focus on the expert corner we speak matters leadership and entrepreneurship and we have a lady with us her name is Esther and I call her Esther Lapid because she runs a training or mentorship program called Lapid Leaders. She'll tell us more about that. Introduce yourself to us Esther and exactly uh, what you charge yourself with doing. I am the CEO of Lapid Leaders and Lapid Leaders Africa. Um, Lapid Leaders is a leadership development program for young uh, leaders and entrepreneurs for Africa. Our mission is to equip young guys to be values driven leaders and entrepreneurs in Africa. Uh, we run two programs. We run a prog two, uh, two day seminars and a three month program. 
The two-day seminars are uh, aimed at insp inspiring young people to be values-driven leaders and entrepreneurs. Um, they meet various market leaders from people who are leading in the, within the media, people who have different businesses, and they inspire them in term, from their stories. How did they build their, their businesses? What were the challenges? How have they built the values that they then uh, drive the businesses with? So basically hear from various market leaders and use that then as a platform to begin to have the conversation about what kind of leaders can they be as young people. Uh, then we also have a three-month program, which is more detailed, where we go into more specific issues around how do you lead yourself, how do you lead others, and how do you lead Africa. Our premise and the reason we do this is because of a conversation that has been had in the marketplace. People everywhere are saying that young people are half-baked, that they join unemployment and they are half-baked. And so the question that we asked ourselves and it's a question that I ask myself every other day is, what is the problem? Is our education equipping young people to be what they need to be? My background is I worked with PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, that's where I started my career. And I worked there for about five years. Then I worked in PricewaterhouseCoopers in UK and then came back in Kenya and worked with a, a local bank. And so I've worked extensively with young people. And the one thing that I have felt continuously is the problem is not the young people. The problem is the equipping process. Our education system equips us to be people who are given solutions as opposed to being the solution providers. Our education system does not teach us to think about what are your values. And the result is we have people who join the workplace who employers are frustrated to work with. Many studies have been done and everybody comes to the conclusion that our young people are not adequately prepared for the marketplace. And so at Lapid Leaders Africa, that's what we focus on. We prepare young people to be not only leaders in the marketplace, but also to be solution providers by becoming the entrepreneurs that Africa needs. And that's basically our mandate. Wow, uh, very interesting uh, look at information there. Now, when you're talking about uh, interacting with young people, uh, we used to have this idea or story about uh, young people being the leaders of tomorrow. Uh, we are told young people are the leaders of today. We are told. Uh, so when are we going to experience this? And what kind of uh, you know, contribution are you making to ensure that indeed these young people are equipped uh, to be able to fit into the available positions of leadership? I like to think about it in terms of a child. When you look at a child uh, who is not ready to start working, you can psych them up to start working up until the point where they actually walk. But the reality is if they cannot walk, the next thing that will happen to them is they will fall because they're not equipped to walk. So you can inspire them, you can psych them, and you can tell them you can walk, baby, but if they can't walk, they can't walk. And I think the, then your challenge is to then equip the child to be able to walk, to take the steps towards walking. And I think that's the thing that we need to do with young people. I like that we've moved to where from saying that uh, they are the leaders of tomorrow and started saying that they're leaders for today. But that's not enough, that's inspiration. The next point has to be equipping them with being those leaders for today. And I think that's what we do. It's spending time with young people every week, every day, figuring out what is it that you need to be able to do to become a leader, to be able to grow a business, to be able to lead, the so to become the solution provider for Africa. One of the studies that was done by McKinsey has said that the reason Afri it's Africa's time is because of the population that we have. The average population of the world, if you compare the population of the developed world against the population of Africa, Africa has the youngest population, and that is our biggest asset. It's said that by 2040, the biggest population of a working generation will be uh, from Africa. The the, those studies have shown that the youngest country in terms of age is Uganda. The average age of Ugandans is 15 years. That's a very young population. And so then the question is, what do we need to do to equip these young people to become then the working population that provides solutions to the world? And I think that's what we do within Lapid Leaders. Mm -hmm. Now, um, thank you. You mentioned uh, just exactly how you equip these uh, young people. And I also want to understand, um, in order for someone to go through such uh, mentorship programs, what are some of the qualifications that you look at? Uh, should they? You talked about uh, uh, people in college and, and, and university. Uh, must someone uh, should they have gone to that level of education, or what are the qualifications? 
one of the things that we believe in is anybody can become a leader, anybody can become an entrepreneur. That's something that we absolutely believe in. What we look at is one, interest, but number two, we are looking for people who, are, uh, who have a good attitude. One of the biggest challenges that young people have is in terms of attitude, either a know-it-all attitude or lack of an attitude that I can be anything, an extreme of both. And so what, that's what we look at first. Is it an attitude of, I can be part of the solution? Whether I finished high school the other day, am I interested in becoming an entrepreneur? Am I interested in becoming a leader? So we do not limit in terms of uh, the people we work with. But generally, we target between 20 and 28 uh, years old. Those are the people that we are working with. Uh, just because it's a lot easier to work with young people to develop um, ideas. Do you, beyond the uh, leadership training, uh, link up these people or these young people to uh, possibly venture capitalists who yeah. could uh, uh, grant them opportunities to actually actualize their businesses or do you have a fund that you issue to them? Yeah. Uh, what happens after the training? Currently, the biggest thing that we do is exposure and it's exposure for entrepreneurship and leadership. So we get various CEOs for jobs to come and sit in and facilitate and mentor the programs. And what that does is you get to meet people who can be interested in either employing you, if you're interested in employment, or people who can support your businesses. So for example, one of the students got a job through this program. Uh, a mentor came in and asked, I want to work with someone who has a good work ethic. And they then got that job and they worked with them. But Rimo, who was here previously, met uh, one of the mentors and the mentor has been working with them and telling her, what can you do? What can you not do? In terms of capital, we have also, uh, one of the mentors has come in and shared what are the opportunities that are available. And we then expose them to various people. So for example, this coming Saturday, we were supposed to have a pitching session. And we had various people who were interested in the business ideas coming in to sit and listen to their ideas. We do not promise capital, but we promise exposure. Wow, what you need is opportunities to make it in business. We are talking to Esther Moniki, who is uh, a leadership trainer uh, in charge of a program called Lapid Leaders Africa, training young people on entrepreneurship and leadership. They say there is a leader in any entrepreneur or in every entrepreneur. And if you want to make your enterprise a success, then you need the knowledge and know-how and just how to go about it. Now, this forum connects you not only to information, but also to possible mentors, venture capitalists, and people that can make a difference in your life and in your enterprise. Um, kindly, just uh, as we wind up, talk to us about the challenges that you see our society today uh, having. Kenya, uh, a very big population of youth. Uh, unfortunately, most of this population or most of these people out uh, out there, not employed, yeah. not uh, having any form of, you know, even self-employment, uh, uh, it is a crisis. Uh, look at countries, neighboring countries like uh, Bujumbura, I mean, uh, uh, that is um, Burundi, for example. Uh, any slight form of uh, instability in the country provokes a massive, uh, you know, uh, outcry or uprising. Look at uh, the terrorism menace in Kenya. Most of the people that find themselves radicalized are young people. Why? Be because they do not have something they can attach themselves to. Uh, most of them are generally idle. Uh, how do you look at the society? And what uh, recommendations probably would you give uh, to be able to you know, curb those kinds of uh, uprisings? I think I totally agree with you. We are sitting on a time bomb, to be very honest. Uh, when you have a population that's made up of very many young people who are unemployed and have no hope, they just need something small to ignite a big problem. I think one of the things as young people, first I speak to young people, is we must get away from an entitlement mentality. Many young people feel they are entitled to solutions, they're entitled to jobs, and so we sit back and we wait for people to provide those solutions. We must get away from that. And we must begin to ask ourselves, how can I be at the forefront of looking for solutions? The other day someone was telling me that the opportunities that have been given to young people in terms of tenders, uh, the tendering, only about 5% have been taken up. 
while the rest are ending up going back to the government. That's a failure on our part. I know there is a big failure on the government in terms of educating young people, but we must be at the forefront of asking, how can I do it? We had a training the other day where someone was talking about how easy a process it is for you to get a tender. But then the problem with young people is we're looking for shortcuts. You either don't have an ETR or you don't have the necessary documentation, yet you expect to get that tender system. But the second thing, and I think this I speak to more, the more adult uh, a population, is I think as a, pop as a population we must accept responsibility for failing to mentor young people. When you see uh, a young person going to be part and the forefront of the Garissa attack. When you hear someone who is a university uh, student is the one who is responsible for killing other many other young people, we must as a generation take responsibility for our own failure. And the last thing has to be from a government perspective. I think the government needs to encourage more of entrepreneur, entrepreneurship. I do not see us in the next five, ten years giving the kind of jobs that are needed for all these young people to be employed. That's the honest truth. Any person who tells you separate anything different from that is actually lying. We are not in a position to absorb all these young people who are leaving university. And so we must take uh, responsibility for teaching them to be entrepreneurs. Universities must move from equipping people to be employees towards moving, towards making them entrepreneurs. And I think we have an opportunity that we must mine. Every time I hang around young people, I'm amazed at the ideas that they have. These young people have a lot of amazing ideas. What they need is mentorship and guidance towards moving from that. And that the government and everybody should take uh, their responsibility on. Wow. Thank you very much uh, for that informative piece. And uh, mentorship and guidance turned out as the key areas of focus if we want to grow our enterprises. Remember, there is a leader in every entrepreneur. And for your enterprise to be successful, you need to focus. That has been it for this segment of the Expert Corner. My name is Zawadim Dibo. Join me again next week on another episode of an exciting show. For now though, I will leave you with the witty clip of the week as well as the business quote of the week tied to our call to action. This is Business Foresight, the hashtag is Foresight. Oh, 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 oh.